So Jason Hill's a fascinating man because he, he's got an attitude to life that demands simplicity, not complexity. This is the DB3S, which is a very special car. Very, very special. It was, it was, it, it was 1955. It was um, three cars with the kangaroo stable. Some Australians came over and they raced in the, U in the in across Europe. And this was one of those original cars. And so it's all in its original spec and it drives beautifully. It's so balanced in the wet. It's just beautiful. Then the old Healy, but that's a, I learned to drive and race in that. Then I'm sort of saving that for my son to teach him to race. Nice traditional old race car. And then the fast lady. They were railway engineers, Bentley. So um, you can see here, it's all railway kit. You can suddenly see the heritage of the railways. I just find helicopters so much more, the, the helicopter world is very different. Big difference in aviation between helicopters and planes. Uh, yeah, th this is very convenient, very simple. In, in the world of aviation, things are quite complicated. In the world of helicopters, and everyone thinks it's the opposite way around. They think helicopters are complicated and aeroplanes are simple. It takes an awful lot of work to achieve simplicity. And Jason is about simplicity, he gets it. He's broken everything down and he's coming at it from the other direction. So it's not just another helicopter. It's not the next helicopter that's coming along. That's not what he's doing. He's doing 2.0. He's gone back to basics and he's starting again. Why have helicopters and why has aviation got so complicated and so expensive? And he is trying to single-handedly reverse that and create a helicopter for us passionate uh, enthusiasts who want to fly. So, my God, I, I just, he's my hero. So this is um, due south. So this is the story of um, the flight from the North Pole to the South Pole. So uh, we took a Robinson 44, flew it up to the North Pole, um, through some pretty harsh conditions. There's me running around the, the North Pole. So we're, we're parked on the North Pole, so I'm running around the world. I'm obviously quite happy about that. Yeah. We, 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 had a, we had a GPS and uh, we, we got it to 89.58, 89.59, 90.0000, the North Pole. But the, the, the GPS, obviously, no one ever intended it to go to the North Pole because it obviously couldn't take that figure. So it immediately crashed. <laughs> so we landed and we said, okay, we're on the North Pole, um, but we've got no GPS. <laughs> we're now stuck. So we put a tent up and we had to think about it. Here we are celebrating our arrival at the pole. We've got a little uh, champagne on ice. <laughs> and um, Q, who I was with, is a fabulous pilot, woke up the next morning and said, I've got the answer. He said, we're on top of the world and the sun was going around us, not going up or down, it goes around. And so he said, if we point the, if we imagine our clock was 24 hours, it takes 24 hours to go around, if we pointed the our hand on a 24 hour clock at the sun, then 12 o'clock, that means London would be there. And we know that New York's five hours ahead of London, so five hours, so New York is there. And we know that LA is nine hours ahead, so LA is there. And so Tokyo, we know, is there. So on that basis, we took off and we navigated using 
a watch. And then we headed on down through, um, through the Americas, through Central America. Uh, we did the Amazon from the source of the Amazon up to, to, uh, from the sea up to the source, um, down through South America, which I love, and then on to the, probably the most amazing place in the world, which is Antarctica. Antarctica is interesting because at the, te- the middle of Antarctica, it's 10,000 feet. That is what we call a crevasse. Look at the size of that hole. So it's a proper, proper mountain and the air comes onto the to the top and then it cools and it's called a catabatic wind because it cools and it drops so you right. get this huge wind. Uh, this is the bit we've been uh, dreading. The light's gone now, it's amazing. What's happening, we've got cloud cover above us, we've got snow below us, the white, everything's just gone white. It's just terrifying, the contrast, we could be two feet above the ground or we could be 200. Thousands and thousands of miles of nothing out there, no one there, no tracks. You're on your own, and uh, it's just very, very beautiful. Very beautiful. Well, first, I, I was driving across the Bering Straits when, when I saw that, and, um, and, and the helicopter landed and dropped some stuff off and took off, and it flew away, and I was like, my God, that is the way to travel. That's what I've got to do next. Let's just see. Let me 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 see. Let me